for the morning rush. And we start with Kristen Curry. Again, morning. We're looking at our first of two storm systems moving in later on tonight. So today it's just a mix of sun and clouds. But by around midnight and into the early part of our Saturday, here comes the rain and snow. Snow favoring the higher elevations above 7,500 feet. The rest of us mostly rain. Could see a few flakes in there early in the morning. And then as we get into Sunday, we actually are taking a break in the morning. We get ready for another storm system Sunday afternoon. This one looking to favor the southern half of the state. Crystal. And we start with an update. The plan to open a resource center for inmates released from MDC is moving forward. We told you yesterday morning about the proposal to help steer inmates in the right direction when they're released. Last night, the Joint City and County Commission voted unanimously in favor of a first of its kind resource center. The proposal now goes back to the County Commission. They have the final say on the plan. A repeat offender is back behind bars after causing a huge SWAT situation. Yesterday, APD found two stolen cars at a home near Bridge Boulevard. As police were taking 37 year old Rebecca Baca into custody, she told police two other people were inside the home connected to the stolen cars. Officers didn't find anyone inside that house. This morning, we're waiting to hear more details from APD about a crash that left a pedestrian dead last night. Police say a man died after being hit by a vehicle on San Mateo near Highlands. Investigators say the man was attempting to cross the street in a non-designated crosswalk area. That's when he was hit. Police say it does not appear the driver is at fault. President Obama has ordered sanctions against Russia after U.S. intelligence linked Moscow to cyber attacks aimed at influencing the presidential election in favor of Donald Trump. The U.S. is expelling 35 Russian officials from the U.S. and closing two Russian compounds, one in Maryland, the other in New York. How Russia is responding coming up in our five facts. New details now. New York law enforcement already working on plans to prevent any possible attacks during its massive New Year's Eve celebration. This year, their focus is preventing a deadly truck driving attack like the ones we've seen in Germany and in France. 100 patrol cars will surround the site. Some 7,000 officers will patrol the ground with some bomb sniffing dogs. This morning, two girls are recovering after falling 20 feet from a chairlift at a small Colorado ski resort. Unfortunately, their 40 year old mother fell too, but died from the fall. The National Ski Area Re Association says this is the first chairlift related death in 23 years at Granby Ranch. That's about 90 miles west of Denver. A major winter storm continues to pummel the northeast today. The storm began bringing heavy snow to upstate New York and the interior of New England yesterday. Snow will pile up a foot or more in parts, portions of Maine and Vermont's name made even worse by strong winds creating snow drifts. We're not going to see that much snow here at home, but we do have rain and snow in the forecast over the next couple of days. Today's our transition day, so we're going to be looking at cold temperatures to start. I've bumped up that metro threat index to a four because we will likely start to see those showers later late tonight and on and off through the day tomorrow. We've got yet another round on the way for Sunday. Sarah? Hundreds of kids from across the Southwest region are gathering here in Albuquerque for the state's largest Native American basketball tournament. It's for the sixth annual Striking Eagle Native American Invitational, but it's not just any basketball tournament. Organizers are hoping this will get kids interested in going to college. While here, students must attend workshops that are geared towards college, careers, and healthy lifestyles. Organizers say 24 players from last year are now freshmen at UNM. Crystal? In just weeks, lawmakers will discuss a proposal that could require more than votes for anyone wanting to be a sheriff in New Mexico. Democrat Senator Michael Padilla wants voters to decide if the legislature should set qualifications for anyone wanting to be a sheriff. If lawmakers pass his proposal, voters will get a chance to weigh in during the next statewide election. After almost 100 years in business, an Albuquerque printing shop is opening its doors for the last time today. Valiant Printing is on Gold Avenue downtown. The building they're in was recently sold. The owners say after looking to relocate, they decided it was time to move on. Valiant has been in business since 1918. This morning, the Cuesta School District is waiting for an answer from the state. Officials are asking for a waiver so kids will not have to make up missed school days. This is due to the water crisis there. The village's two wells stopped working on December 5th, leaving residents without water for the last 24 days, forcing schools to close for 12 days. Take a look at this video. You can see a coyote walks up the stairs of this Frisco, Texas home, and then you can see it run away with a shoe in its mouth. A local wildlife spokesperson says he can't explain the behavior, but it isn't uncommon to see the coyotes in that area. He says over time they've learned not to be afraid of humans. He says you shouldn't be afraid you'll be attacked.
653. Now, how about a check in the morning drive? Here's some good news as you head out the door. Nothing major across the metro. As you can see, traffic building up just a little bit. For sale down north in I-25, we'll keep our eyes on that spot for you. There are several big bashes planned for the New Year's Eve across Albuquerque, but at the Bio Park, you can celebrate New Year's Eve Eve. The annual New Year's Eve Eve Express happens tonight. The 21 and older event features an evening train ride through the Bio Park, as well as a stroll along the River of Lights and dinner at the Shark Reef Cafe. For tickets, go to our news app. That sounds like a lot of fun. It does. Okay, new this morning, Netflix wants to help parents out get their kids to bed a little early on New Year's. For the third year in a row, Netflix has created New Year's countdowns featuring popular movie and cartoon characters. The idea is to help the kiddos get to bed a little early while mom and dad either party on or go to sleep themselves. Last year, the peak streaming time was 8 p.m. <laughs> Tricksters. <laughs> the CDC is reporting the more a man sits, the more likely it is that he will be obese. But the findings also show increased sitting for men was not associated with an increased risk of diabetes, heart disease, or stroke. Mm, interesting. Finally this morning, the mannequin challenge fad is getting a new lease on life after the crew aboard the International Space Station got on board. In zero gravity, that is. Take a look at this. The six-member crew took on the viral video craze, freezing the camera, for the camera rather, and possibly the most difficult mannequin challenge yet. That's tough. No, that oh, yeah. yeah. There, look, he's holding on with his yeah, you have to hold on. And that's, that's pretty crazy. awesome. <laughs> that is pretty cool. All right, time now for the five facts. We start at number five. Have plans to ring in 2017? Why not leap into the new year with a big splash? Three state parks are hosting polar bear plunges on New Year's Day. A Sugar Eat Canyon, Eagle Nest Lake, and Story Lake. Polar bear plunges have been traditions at the parks for years. For more information, head to our news app. And you said they have a hot tub there? I'll do the hot tub challenge. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Number four. This morning, a man is thankful he's okay after falling 20 feet at Wednesday night's Lobo basketball game. Eddie Bracamonte says his friend was taking a photo of him and his son in their sweet level seats. He lost his balance, flipped right over the edge, falling all the way down to the stairway below. He did have surgery yesterday in his shattered foot. Well, this was an accident. The athletic department says it will take a look at the safety features on that sweet level. As you can see right there, he's videotaping himself Whoa. in the ER. <laughs> Crazy guy. Yikes. At number three, pretty quiet today, but by tonight, we're going to be watching the showers creep across the western state line. This is storm system number one impacting us on New Year's Eve with high elevation snow and valley rain. Temperatures in the 40s, but late Saturday into Sunday, we take a break. Sunday afternoon, storm system number two looking to favor central and southern New Mexico. At number two in the overnight, Russia's foreign minister suggesting expelling 35 U.S. diplomats and closing two facilities in Moscow. This in response to President Obama ordering sanctions against Russia after U.S. intelligence linked Moscow to cyber attacks aimed at influencing the presidential election in favor of Donald Trump. The U.S. is expelling 35 Russian officials from the U.S. and is closing two Russian compounds, one in Maryland, the other in New York. That brings us to number one. While some lawmakers want more checks to get a gun, a New Mexico lawmaker wants to scale back on the concealed carry law. Right now, New Mexicans need to take classes to get a concealed carry permit. But Republican State Senator Steve Novell of San Juan County wants to introduce a bill that would allow anyone legally entitled to own guns to carry them concealed without a permit. If you want to read more on this, go to our website, krqe.com. We have a lot more coming up on Fox New Mexico. Q's Cakes and Cupcakes will be here. And, of course, our tail of the week. We'll see you on the other side.